Good morning everyone, this is the Volkswagen ID7 Pro Tourer and today I'm going to take it on a long distance trip around 650 kilometers or so and on the drive I'm going to tell you everything that I love about this car and some things that are not very good and we're going to see also how the consumption is I'm going to drive not just 130, 140 if I can because this car can charge really well and the consumption is reasonably low so that means that you could drive with a higher speed on the highway to get to your destination destination. Charging is just great with a peak of 190 kilowatt. As with every other driving video of this car, I have to say that this car has 20 inch sport tires on there and we have measured that 19 inch to 20 inch sport wheels is 11% higher consumption. But this is how the press car arrived and this is what we're gonna drive with. So let's go in and drive a bit. I started with 100% and the first positive here, when your battery is at 100% you still have a good amount of regen, I would say around 75%. And a lot of cars at 100% regen, 100% uh, battery don't have any regen, that's not nice. But the overall regen in this car is not very strong, there's not one pedal driving, it's not possible. Regen is okay. Uh, but it doesn't uh, break you down extremely fast, so it's, uh, it's, it's okay. I have navigated uh, to a point where I'm gonna turn around and then I'm gonna find some charging stations on the way there. Um, around 330 kilometers or so, it's uh, from home. And then we go back there, what is this? There's a bug here. Um, yeah, navigation, the navigation overall looks great. I love the look of it. It only has all has to be night mode. In in a day mode, it looks horrible. <laughs> I cannot see the stuff. It, even in daylight, I like it in in dark mode. Um, it's nice that it can show me with what state of charge I'm arriving. It's not nice that I have to go somewhere in. It doesn't say it here. Or the best is in in a Volvo or a Polestar where in Google Maps it tells you your last destination where it tells you if you go to that destination now you will arrive with this and this state of state of charge it's amazing I would love that in here um, the how it calculates how you arrive with at the charging uh, station uh, at, at your destination is pretty good so it knows the elevation change your speed the weather and stuff like this your consumption right now that is awesome um, if you plan the trip with a charging stop the chargers that it, it chooses are not al always the best uh, or let's say you cannot select if you want special chargers so if you only want to charge at ionity you only want to charge at a, at, at a different brand or something because it's cheaper for you you cannot select that that's a bit sad um, but other, you can choose other ones so if you select the charger you can say i want a different charger you can do that I'm driving around 140, well, 140 on the speedometer, and we come to the next amazing thing, the head-up display. Especially when you're navigating something on a long, a long distance trip, it's just awesome, the whole combination. You have here your uh, map and your navigation, then we have the ID light, that's a, a, a LED light strip that goes from the window from the left to the right, that will animate that, hey, uh, uh, you have to go to the right or something and then of course the AR part of the head-up display is telling you to go right and if you have to change lanes it will show a different animation so you are on the right lane and stuff like this I show you the the, the AR, oh, I show you the AR part with the here we have the automated assistant lane change and this is the travel assist and this is the lane change 
back and then travel assist goes back on but this shows you so much about the navigation that it's very easy to navigate and not forget where you have to turn or go off and stuff it's really awesome a consumption so far 169 I drove around 60 kilometers there was a bit of country road and since highway I drive 140 it's 20 and a half degrees out there right now no AC no heat um, it's not gonna get too warm today maybe it's gonna rain uh, another great thing about this car are the drive modes drive modes are not something uh, unusual for electric cars that happens a lot but I love the individual drive mode where I can select what is what so I can set the, the steering into sport for heavy steering but the driving in eco and the climate in eco so it doesn't use too much and then I can what which is amazing for me the adaptive cruise control can be in eco so that means that uh, when you are in cruise control and there's a, a speed change or the car in front of you or the car in front of you is accelerating then you're accelerating in eco mode not uh, strong power and it's then extremely comfortable It was just raining like crazy and this gets me to another little downside the wiper control since the stocks have been changed so gear change is on the right and indicator and wipers are on the left you have your rain sensor and your sensitivity but only in two steps in my ID3 back in the day I had five steps and for example in ID4 and 5 as well and this all changed now and ID7 has the same thing so I only have light sensitivity and high sensitivity and for some rain that's just not the perfect thing so either it doesn't wipe enough or it wipes, wipes way too much I'm 106 kilometers away from the charger Ionity charger in Eichstetten I think I have around 60 kilometers of margin 66 I think so that's fine I should car uh, car tells me I arrive with 15% when we started it said 22% but I didn't know that I'm gonna drive 140 if I can and that it rained but just for five minutes so this is not the big thing I arrived at the charger with 7%. I'm still charging. I'm gonna charge to around 60, 65%. And it tells me I can get to the next Ionity charger. I'm here at Ionity. I'm gonna show you in a second. First, I wanted to show you my data. Uh, average consumption 223, 307 kilometers driven. So I drove from 100 to 7%, 307 kilometers, 140 when I could. The rest was then the speed limit, my average speed 114 and it's still raining. I have to use my rain, what is it? God damn it, I can't think of the way, word. Umbrella, there we have it. <laughs> so I'm charging here, I only see there are six stalls, four are occupied. When I came here there was another car here, but the car left. It's all fine. In Eichstetten there's an Aligo charger here as well. What is it? Six hyperchargers here. And I think that the Tesla supercharger is coming here too because we have Tesla equipment laying around here. They are putting a supercharger here as well. Nice, nice. nice. Oh, there are more. There are 12. On the other side, there are more. I'm an idiot. Look. 
There are six more charges here. Nobody's here because everyone's stupid, <laughs> including me. <laughs> I would have all the space in the world here. <laughs> Why are the two? One looks broken, the light is not on, and two are white. What is that? What that mean? Doesn't say anything. Just because the light is off and the whiteness also doesn't say anything special. Just tap to start. Security verification. And here the screen doesn't. No, oh, it is. It works. Everything works. And here we get to the next amazing thing about this car. It's charging. I got 190 kilowatt peak, and at 41 percent, I still have 168 kilowatt and I only need to charge to 60% so this is done in no time it took me 9 minutes from 7 to 42% 10 minutes Charging, I charge to 65%. Like I said, uh, it, uh, my turnaround point is in 20 kilometers. It's on, it's on a highway, on an exit, I'm close to the Bodensee, and then I'm going back the whole way. Uh, it should be at the end 380 kilometers or so, uh, 680, and. Uh, I should arrive at the next Ionity charger with around 15%. We'll see what the weather is, if it gets better. Like now it's raining, but if the rain will get better, then I arrive with more, a higher state of charge. But right now it's like this. Another thing uh, that's amazing with charging is in this car is of course the preheating. You have an extra button here an extra menu that will tell you that if the battery is not at perfect temperature for fast charging that you can preheat it and you can uh, and it, the amazing thing is it tells you like like now I can charge with 117 kilowatt at 60 percent and it underneath when the battery is cold it will show a button manual preheating and then it will say um, if you preheat it will take whatever time 20 minutes and then you can charge with 130 kilowatt or something but it tells you all that data which is really cool and when you're navigating to a charger you can activate the option that it's gonna preheat uh, on the way there which is also awesome when you do it manually it does it with the full power that it can I think 5.5 kilowatt but if you have it in the navigation it will gradually heat it and see if you're what you're driving the driving is already heating up the battery a bit, so it's trying to, to save as much energy as possible, which is really cool. Little update on the drive. It tells me I arrive at the charger with 14%. There was just a very slow part that I drove because it's raining and it was 80 when it's wet on the road so uh, it was slow and then afterwards was really busy and we couldn't drive more than 100 because nobody was driving fast and if there are a lot of slow pokes on the right and then other slow pokes that drive just a tiny bit faster are blocking everything then everything slows down that's why when I <laughs> When I do my range test at 110 or 90 and I pass, I accelerate and I don't want to slow anyone down. Because that's mean. Not everyone is driving 90 or 110. So why would I push, uh, uh, slow them down? Yes, I said it. <laughs> 130, 140 is a different thing. Uh, but 90 and 110, yeah, like now. We're driving now slow in a second because someone is passing in the front very slow and then it's busy and then everybody has to slow down. Yep, it's 122 kilometers to that charger. I'm at 43%, I have 186 kilometers of range. So 65 kilometers of margin, no problem. 
what's my consumption 216 when did I start this morning I don't even know for the time we'll see on the video If you need a charging solution for your trip through Europe, then Mangao is exactly what you need. With Mangao you can charge at over 550,000 charging stalls all over Europe, 127,000 of those are in Germany. You can start your charging process with a card with this tiny little chip that I tried to show you even though I have the <laughs> umbrella in my hand which is so tiny it's amazing or with the app and the app has a new design for a while and it looks amazing you can filter by power you can see how much power you can get how many on that charging station and, and many and how many charging stalls are occupied or broken and everything you can navigate to this it's a really amazing app so check them out in the link in the description below I'm at Fastnet, the last charging stop. We only charge twice. Again, I charge to around 60-65%. I'll show you data inside. I wanted to film the car a bit, but again, it's raining as always today. <laughs> today we have a rainy day. We have 160 kilometers to go. It says I arrive at around 2. Um, I charge to, to, I guess, 200, 210 kilometers of range. That should be enough. I have 110 right now, so not too long. Yes, and my consumption, 209. It was a bit slow now with a lot of rain, a lot of traffic, a lot of slow moving traffic and a lot of uh, speed limits. Last lag, I'm on my way, still raining, not amazingly uh, a great road because of this, everything's wet and you can't see so amazing, so a lot of times I don't drive the 140, I'm already at 51%, charge to 60 something, um, I have 70 kilometers of margin, so I have no problem at all, and everything is just fine and comfortable and nice and that's the main thing about this car it's really comfortable it's quiet in here and even though those 20 inch sport tires have a higher consumption you still charge for maximum 15 minutes and then you go on for over 200 kilometers it's no problem and uh, with the 19 inch wheels you charge for 10 minutes or 12 uh, and you can go further it's just amazing and it, it's just so comfortable and nice and quiet and so many auto functions of course auto wipers that work yes like I said before it's not the, uh, the, I would love to have more sensitiv sensitivity uh, options but if I have it on high and it's enough it's, uh, it's just too much sometimes and um, I love the cruise control, it reacts very nicely, even though I have everything in comfort now on the highway, not uh, individual mode, drive mode, <coughs> and of course the self-steering is really nice. When it's extremely raining like this and, and um, the, the visibility on the road is not amazing, that sometimes it can be a bit off, because it's all about vision. Um, but other than that, it's just amazing. Oh, does it stop raining? Is it possible for a second? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's just nice to drive this car. Uh, there's a reason I bought my ID7, and I prefer my ID7 because I don't need a rear wiper. I don't need more trunk space. 
I get a tiny bit more range than what this car has um, and this costs 800 euros more or something but my, my ID7 is already too big for us I wanted it for the comfort not for the space so I'm very happy and I'm happy with this it's nice to do a seven almost 700 kilometer drive it's not exhausting at all I have the massage on forget it because it turns off after 30 minutes and then you have to turn it back on yourself but you can do it on the seat you don't have to go in here that's nice nice you feel taken care of and you're not stressed out. I saw that when we drove with our ID7 to Eindhoven, which was 900 kilometers or so. That was just totally fine. Even for my wife who hates long drives. She doesn't want to do it and she didn't love it, but it was okay. I arrived and it's raining so much I have to film inside. I arrived here with 15%. Um, right now the AC is taking one kilowatt. Um, my average consumption, my kilometers that I've driven, my average speed, six hours, 11 minutes is not including when I wasn't in the car. So the second you go out of the car, this time doesn't go, but when you're in the car and AC and everything is on, then the time will run. I think I left at 6.45, so seven hours. Seven hours for 664 kilometers. I went to P once, so this is totally okay. Was a nice drive. Look at that rain. And see it the best here. Oh my God. If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. And if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes of this channel, I have a third YouTube channel behind the battery. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.